Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail Roots Learning Series. On today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Freeware Hastings line, which is available from Backdated Train Sim, and simulates the route between the town of Tombridge, which is in Kent on the southeastern main line, and the coastal town of Hastings, which is actually only around four miles from where I live, in the town of Bexhill. The route is modelled as it was roughly in the 1980s, uh, though the scenario that I'm driving, I've set the time period in the late 1990s, when Connex had the southeastern and South Central franchises. So, the service that I'm doing loosely follows the modern day timetable of train 1 Hotel 06, which is the 6.33am service from Tunbridge through to Hastings, calling at all stations for a total journey distance of just over 33 miles. Our stops along the way include High Brooms, Tunbridge Wells, Frant, Wadhurst, Stonegate, Etchingham, Robertsbridge, Battle, Crowhurst, West St. Leonard's, St. Leonard's Warrior Square, and Hastings. The train that I'm using today is a class 421 4 SIG unit, um, with each 4 SIG unit being formed of four coaches, and I've got two units connected together to form an eight coach train. You will notice that both units are in different liveries, with the front unit that I'm going to be driving being in Connex livery, and the rear unit being in old BR Network Southeast livery. And the reason for this is that after privatisation, train companies were actually very slow to repaint their stock into their new privatised liveries, and I just thought it would be a bit more interesting to see the two-tone liveries that you often saw at that time. The Class 421 was in service between 1964 and 2005 on mainline services, and until 2010 on the short Lemington branch. They were manufactured at Brell York, with a total of 166 of these units produced. The total length of each unit is just under 266 feet, and they have a maximum speed of 90 miles per hour, which we should be able to get up to on this journey today. The total weight of each unit is 152 tonnes, and they have a total power output of 1,000 horsepower per unit uh, per power car, and there is one power car in each four-coach unit. The electric system that they run on is the 750 volts DC third rail system found in London and the southeast. Once in the cab of the Class 421, there's just a couple of things I need to do to set up the train ready for departure. Because this is an old model, not actually uh, that much has been simulated here, so it's very basic startup procedure. I'm just going to put the reversing handle now into the forward position. And now that I've done that, we're actually pretty much set up. As you may have noticed, the headlights are already switched on. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of the systems here. Uh, on the left hand side we have the brake handle which is actually has two braking systems on board which is the automatic air brake and the electro pneumatic brake. The electro pneumatic brake is the general one that I'm going to use on this journey and if you look there to the right hand side of the screen near the top you can see the brake gauge with the needle currently pointing at 20. So if I now move the handle to the release position, you'll see that needle's fallen to zero. And if I just now increment the handle, you'll see that the needle slowly starts climbing. And we can set that to a precise positioning. I'm generally going to try and not go above 40 uh, when braking in this unit. As I do remember in real life, you could actually see uh, on the bit between the two units. You could see inside the driver's cab when two units were connected together. And you could see how hard the brakes were being applied. And generally, when I was looking at that when I was a young kid, when I travelled on these trains, train drivers tended to not go above 40 on the brake gauge. Now, the automatic air brake is slightly different. So if I now release the brakes fully, I've now got to move the brake handle quite a way around. And I didn't quite manage it there, so I'm going to have to try again. And you've got to move it all the way around to the side position. And now you'll see the brakes haven't actually applied yet. So if I want to apply the brakes using the automatic air brake, and I have to increase to uh, apply position, You'll see the needle climbing, and now I'll move back to the hold position, and then the needle will actually hold at the brake force that I've selected. So I can now just increase a bit more, and now move back to the hold position again. And now if I want to fully release the brakes, I've got to move the handle all of the way back around, and now you can see the brakes are released again. So you do have the choice of the two braking systems, but I personally find the automatic air brake much harder to operate, much fiddlier, especially with a keyboard, um, whereas if you had the handle in real life, it would probably be considerably easier. I do have the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack installed for this train, 
And so we do have a two-tone horn here, controlled with the space bar and the B key. And now you can see there I've got the speedometer measured in miles per hour. One thing I will point out is that the speedometer is actually inaccurate on this unit, unfortunately, and it's under reading the speed by up to around five miles per hour at points, especially at lower speeds. Um, but because I'm driving without the HUD turned on, I'm going to have to drive by what the speedometer says uh, rather than risk speeding. Now, if we continue here, I've got the power handle with four notches of power. Uh, as with many older British rail units, um, these are set as shunt for notch one, series for notch two, parallel for notch three, and weak field for notch four. Now, say I was in the um, parallel mode at notch three, and then I wanted to drop the power down to notch two, I would actually have to move the power handle from three to zero, and then back up to two to give us the desired power setting. I will also mention on this unit that the rolling resistance seems to have been simulated a little too much. So when you've got the power handle in the zero or idle or off position, then unfortunately the train actually starts to lose speed a bit too quickly compared to how it would be in reality. So now that we've had a look around the cab, let's just take another look at the train here at Tombridge station, and then we can depart and head out towards Hastings. Departing away from Tombridge, the starting speed limit here is 20 miles per hour. At this point, we've got around three and a half miles to go to our first stop, which is High Brooms. Now that we're doing 20 miles per hour, I've just shut off the power for a moment to allow the train to coast. Then I will increase the power as we start to lose some speed. So we're now turning away from the southeastern main line, which goes straight on and that goes through Paddock Wood and Staplehurst down to Ashford International, as well as Folkestone and Dover. So we've now turned on to the Hastings line here, and in a moment we're going to be going up 1 in 54, which is quite a steep grade. Unfortunately it makes it very difficult to maintain a speed, at which point I'm now going to just accelerate to just above 20 miles per hour there on the speedometer, knowing that it is slightly misreading. And I'm going to have to go between idle and step two of power to try and maintain this speed. So in idle, we're going to be slowing down quite quickly as we are. And now in step two, we're accelerating quite quickly. So unfortunately, there's no balance point here. And I've just got to keep adjusting the power handle to try and ensure that we stay as close to 20 miles per hour as possible. The speed limit here is now going up to 60 miles per hour and I can accelerate up towards 60 just after we enter the tunnel just ahead. So at this point I'm now going to start accelerating up towards 60 miles per hour. The gradient has shallowed now to up 1 in 103. So you'll notice quite a few tunnels on this route are actually single track. I believe some of them may have been doubled now in uh, real life, uh, but there are still some that are single track, and that's because of the loading gauge on this route, which meant that the trains were actually too wide for two trains to be able to pass in the tunnels. So we had two and a half miles to go at the end of the tunnel there.
So now we've approached 60 miles per hour. I'm now going to shut off the power. I'm going to have to go between idle and parallel to try and maintain the speed close to 60 miles per hour. The signal that we just passed, we've got one and a half miles to go to our stop. So we're now crossing a viaduct here, and at the end of this viaduct, we've now got around one mile to go. So we've now got a double yellow signal. At this point, we've got three quarters of a mile to go, and I'm just going to allow the train to coast, so we're going to start losing speed. The gradient here is now going up one in 100. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop at High Brooms just after this right-hand curve has ended. Brakes on quite lightly here. Looks like I might be slowing down a little too early, so just release the brakes for a moment. Now I can see the platform end is coming up. So I want to aim to enter the platform at no faster than around 30 miles per hour. And here at High Broom Station, I need to stop at the S sign, which is at the end of the platform. CDS is just coming up on the left hand side. So we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from high brooms, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour. We've got one and a half miles to go to our next stop at Tunbridge Wells. And I've also departed here on a cautionary signal. Um, so we are currently under a single yellow aspect, so I've got to bear that in mind. We're also on a 1 in 125 upward gradient, so you've got to be very careful when departing away from high brooms uh, to ensure that you don't end up rolling back. So at this point we've got half a mile to go to the next signal. So I'm not going to go above series on the power handle to ensure that I'm not going too fast and I'm able to slow down and stop at the next signal should I need to do so. We now have a warning for an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed restriction. idle the power at this point I can now see that the next signal is currently red so I've now got the brakes on to bring our speed down and ensure that I can stop in time. So the signals now jump to green so I can now start accelerating once again. At this signal we've got around one mile to go to our stop, and just under one mile to go to an upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit. The speed limit's now dropping to 50 miles per hour, and we're currently passing Tunbridge Wells Central Goods Siding, which uh, looks like it's seen better days.
So we're now coming up on another tunnel and just at the tunnel entrance here we've got a warning for the upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit I mentioned. So at this point I'm going to idle the power and we've got half a mile to go to the upcoming speed limit. As soon as I can see the end of this tunnel, I'm then going to apply the brakes for the 25 mile per hour speed restriction, which comes into force immediately at the tunnel end here. So I can now see the end coming up. I've now got the brakes on to bring our speed down to 25 in time. Probably brakes slightly harder there than I really needed to. And you can now see here Tunbridge Wells Station. Here at Tunbridge Wells, I'm aiming to stop at the eight car stop sign just after the overbridge up ahead. See there, we've got a, a green repeater, which is actually inaccurate as you wouldn't have had green repeaters on this route in the 1980s. Now, I have noticed a few inaccuracies on this route, but on the whole, I think that they've done a really, really good job. And I've certainly quite enjoyed driving on this route. So you can just see the eight car stop sign there just on our left and we should now be stopping in just about the right place. I found the brakes there a bit more than I intended to. I was struggling to get into the uh, right uh, position for the brake force. So here we are, arrival at Tunbridge Wells. Departing away from Tunbridge Wells, the starting speed limit is still 25 miles per hour, and we've got two and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Frant. So now we've reached 25 miles per hour, I'm just going to shut off the power and I'm going to have to go between idle and series to try and maintain the speed as close to 25 as possible. The speed limit here is now going up to 60 miles per hour and I can accelerate shortly after this junction here. So we've now got a short single track section and we're still going up here at 1 in 115. Which does make maintaining speed slightly more difficult. So somewhere around here there was actually a junction which in the 1980s was a railway route which went to the right through Tunbridge Wells West Station and on to Uckfield through Eridge. This route um, was actually closed in the 1980s um, and today it's actually become a preserved railway in the form of the Spa Valley Railway which runs from Tunbridge Wells West through to Eridge. Arkfield Station today is notoriously inaccessible from the south, so uh, for example if you wanted to get from Brighton to Uckfield, which years ago was easily possible uh, for a short journey. You've now got to go all the way from Brighton up to East Croydon in South London and then take the train from East Croydon South back down to Uckfield. So now passing through a short tunnel. At the end of this tunnel we've then got one and a third miles to go to Frent. The speed limit here is now going up to 90 miles per hour and we're starting on a down 1 in 100 grade which will significantly increase our ability to accelerate. At this overbridge just here we've got just under one mile to go. At this point I'm now going to idle the power just to allow the train to coast as we're doing around 70 miles per hour. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop 
near the end of this left hand curve here. So I've now got the brakes on for our stop at France Station. I've gone up to 40 there as I'm not quite sure exactly how far away it is. I want to ensure that we are slowing down quick enough. Looks like I can see the platform end just coming up and we're actually uh, coming in maybe slightly hotter than I would have liked. But actually these speeds coming off pretty quickly here because we've started on an uphill gradient. And I've ended up entering the platform at around 30 miles per hour which is ideal so I did actually get the correct braking point though for a moment there I was slightly concerned. Um, that we were going to end up uh, overshooting the platform. So here at France Station I need to stop at the 8 car stop sign at the end of the platform. I'll just um, release the brakes for a moment as we were stopping slightly too early. Unfortunately the pings there were actually for the train uh, which was stopped here just to our right. I'm not quite sure why I could hear that because in real life you certainly wouldn't be able to hear that, um, that clearly or loudly uh, from a distance away. And so now we should be stopped in about the right place. Departing away from France, the starting speed limit is 90 miles per hour. We are currently on a level grade, though we're about to start going downhill at 1 in 100. We've got 2 and 3 quarter miles to go to our next stop at Wadhurst, and we've got around 1 mile to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit. So just coming up on the left here is a warning for the upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit. At this point I'm just going to idle the power to allow the train to coast. The warning is just under half a mile from the limit itself. I'm going to apply the brakes for the 50 mile per hour speed limit just before the next right hand curve which is just coming up. So I've actually entered there at around 53 miles per hour according to the speedometer so in reality I probably entered at 50 and I think when I made the notes for this journey I did that by what was on the HUD rather than what was on the speedometer so I should have braked slightly earlier to ensure that I was down in speed in time. We are now down to 50 miles per hour. We're now on an up 1 in 119 gradient, so I do actually need to adjust the power settings to try and maintain the speed as close to 50 as possible by going between shunt, sorry, um, between idle and parallel modes. So the signal we just passed, we had just over one mile to go to our next stop. At this underbridge just here, we've now got around three quarters of a mile to go. So now going to idle the power and start braking for our stop at Wadhurst at this overbridge just here. 
got a staggered platform here, so you can see the platform on the right-hand side there on the upline, which actually comes in first. So when you see that, you might be fooled for a moment into thinking that you're closer to your stopping point than you actually are. Now you can see the downline platform here just coming up, with the speed limit going up to 60 miles per hour immediately as we enter the platform. Here at Wadhurst Station, I need to aim to stop at the eight-car stop sign, which is at the end of the platform. We'll say that Wadhurst Station looks quite different today to how it does here um, on this route. I've stood on this station numerous times due to uh, engineering works, where I've had to take a late-night train from here down to Hastings. We should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Wadhurst, the speed limit is currently 60 miles per hour, and we've got around four and a half miles to go to our next stop, which is Stonegate. So as mentioned a moment ago, I've actually uh, spent quite a lot of time at Wadhurst Station, usually very late at night, and that's because uh, last year I was having to use this route rather a lot, rather than my usual route to London uh, from Bexhill, which goes via Eastbourne and uh, Haywards Heath on the Brighton Main Line up to Victoria, due to a number of Southern Rail uh, train strikes. The staff were on strike and many services weren't running. And there was a lot of engineering work on this route, so... Um, especially on Monday nights. You'd have to get the train from London Charing Cross down to Tunbridge, and then there was a bus link between Tunbridge and Wadhurst, where you could then get the train service from Wadhurst down to Hastings. And you'd actually have about a half hour wait at Wadhurst Station, where I got quite a lot of time to talk to a number of train drivers, which was quite interesting, as I learned more about train driving. Just to point out here, I'm now going to idle the power to allow the train to coast, now that we've reached 60 miles per hour. Uh, one of the cool things about the train from Wadhurst down to Hastings at that time of night, departing Wadhurst at something like 1.30, 1.40 in the morning, is that they made it so it was request stop only, and we only called at the stations where passengers wanted to get off, so we could really zoom down this route towards Hastings uh, through most of the uh, stations. And of course at night the appearance of speed is greatly magnified, and so it's really, uh, I quite enjoyed those journeys, especially on such an empty train where I could just sit in a carriage and have the whole coach to myself. So now we've left the tunnel, double track has resumed just here. We've got just under three and a half miles to go. And as we're on a down one in 114 gradient, I can just allow the train to continue to coast and we won't actually lose that much speed. The speed limit here is now going up to 90 miles per hour, and we've got just over two miles to go to our stop. The gradient is steepening here to down one in 97, which means that we should be able to get up to pretty close to 90 miles per hour before I need to start braking.
at this next whistle ball just here. We've got around one and a quarter miles to go. So I'm just idling the power here to allow the train to coast. And now looking out for the following whistle ball, which is around three quarters of a mile from our stop. I'm going to apply the brakes as we reach it. It's just coming up now on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna brake up to 40 on the brake gauge here. So we'll shortly be coming up on Stonegate Station. The platforms here are once again slightly staggered. So the platform on the upline to our right is just slightly closer to us than the platform on the downline that we're going to be stopping at. You can see the platforms just coming up here. So now reducing the braking just to ensure that we're not going to stop too quickly. As usual, I'm aiming to enter the platform at around 30 miles per hour. And here at Stonegate Station, I need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. So we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing Stonegate, the starting speed limit is still 90 miles per hour, and we've got around three and a half miles to go to our next stop, which is Etchingham. We're now on a downward gradient of one in 103, which will aid us in our acceleration. In fact, between here and Etchingham, we should pretty much be able to get up to the 90 mile per hour speed limit. We actually have quite a long signal section here, and so the next landmark is actually the next signal, at which point we've got around one and a quarter miles to go. Now reach the next signal with around one and a quarter miles to go. At this point I'm shutting off the power to allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop as we enter the next right hand curve.
slowing down quite nicely. We're possibly even slowing down a bit too early, so I'm just reducing the braking for a moment until I can see the platform coming up ahead. I can now see the platform, I think. Yep, I can now for certain see the platform there. And so we're slowing down quite nicely. In fact, I'm just reducing the braking very slightly uh, to ensure that we're not going too slow as we enter the platform. Here at Etchingham Station, I'm aiming to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. And so we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from Etchingham, the starting speed limit is still 90 miles per hour and we've got just over two miles to go to our next stop, which is Roberts Bridge. At this upcoming signal, we've then got one and a quarter miles to go to our stop. And now I'm looking out for an underbridge coming up in a moment, at which point I'm going to uh, uh, cut the power back to idle. And I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop at the next overbridge. So I've just reached the underbridge here. And I've got the power handle back to idle and you can see the overbridge coming up just ahead. So I'm going to apply the brakes up to between 30 and 40 on the brake gauge as we pass this bridge just here. There will also be a warning for an upcoming 70 mile per hour speed limit just before the uh, platform at Roberts Bridge Station. slowing down just a little bit too quickly there. I've just cut the braking back. Now you can see the platform at Roberts Bridge Station coming up. Here at Roberts Bridge, once again, I need to stop at the S sign, which is at the end of the platform. So the AWS there was just for the 70 mile per hour speed warning for a speed limit, which comes into force uh, not too long after departure from Roberts Bridge Station.
And so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Roberts Bridge, the speed limit is very quickly down to 70 miles per hour at the speed post you can see just coming up, and we've got around 6 miles to go to our next stop, which is Battle. And Battle actually gets its name from the Battle of Hastings, so the famous battle in 1066 where William Duke of Normandy landed actually at Pevensey near Eastbourne came to fight against King Harold at the time for the throne of England. And the battle actually took place at the town of Battle rather than at Hastings. I believe at the time Hastings was probably the nearest place of any significance, which is why um, it's nicknamed after Hastings. now about to start quite a long steep climb at up 1 in 90, which will significantly affect our ability to accelerate. This signal just here, we've got around three quarters of a mile to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit. Now passing a warning for the upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit, just over half a mile from the limit itself. I'm now going to idle the power at this point and the train should pretty much coast down towards 50 miles per hour. Though I will apply the brakes at the next AWS ramp if necessary, just to ensure that we are down in speed in time. So I've now got the brakes on to ensure that we're down to 50 in time. And so we are now down to 50 miles per hour. We're now about to enter another single track section through a tunnel. And now need to go between idle and parallel power modes to try and maintain the speed as close to 50 miles per hour as possible. Now entering double track once again and the speed limit here is now going back up to 70 miles per hour. At this point we've got around three and two thirds of a mile to go to our stop at Battle. As we reach 70 miles per hour, I'm just going to idle the power now and allow the train to coast. The speed limit will shortly be going up further to 80 miles per hour. Now the speed limit's gone up to 80 miles per hour with two and three quarter miles to go to our stop. We're now starting on a 1 in 100 upward gradient, which will affect our ability to accelerate here. At this point we've now got around two and a quarter miles to go at this signal just here.
Now as we approach 80 miles per hour, I need to go between idle and weak field to try and maintain the speed as close to 80 as possible. I just idled the power, I'm going to lose a little bit of speed and then I'm going to go back up. Um, at the overbridge just coming up after this right hand curve, you can see a square shaped overbridge there. That indicates that we've got around three quarters of a mile to go. And so I'm um, just going to bring our speed up very slightly and now idle the power. And I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment, just a few seconds after passing the overbridge there. So this should now be about the right place to start braking. Uh, at Battle Station, the platform is staggered once again, and I need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. Due to the gradient that we're on, I think that I've actually braked a little bit too early, so I'm just uh, keeping an eye out there. Actually, now I can see Battle's uh, platform just coming up. So you can see the platform on the up line there to our right, which comes up first, and then of course our platform in a moment on the left hand side. So I have slowed down about right, but I'm just going to release the brakes just for a brief moment until we enter the platform, and then I'm going to reapply it once again. Speed's coming off very nicely here, and I'm just reducing the braking just because we're going to stop slightly too early. There we are now, the eight car sign is in the left window. We should be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from battle, the starting speed limit is 80 miles per hour, and we've got around two miles to go to the next stop, which is Crowhurst. Now passing a warning for an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed restriction, which is a quarter of a mile from the speed limit itself. The speed limit is now dropping to 60 miles per hour with around one and a half miles to go to our stop. And now we're at 60 miles per hour, I need to go between idle and parallel settings to try and maintain the speed. At the signal you can see just coming up, this is a distant signal, so it can only display a, a clear or cautionary aspect. And we've got just under one mile to go at this signal. So I'm just going to allow the train to coast here. I'm going to apply the brakes for Crowhurst Station as we approach the next overbridge. You can now see the platform at Crowhurst just coming up ahead, so I've got the brakes up as high as 40, just to ensure that we do slow down in time. Here at Crowhurst I need to stop at the 8 car stop sign right near the end of the platform. 
So we're going to slow down and we're entering the platform here at a good speed. So at this point we're probably only around three or four miles from Bexhill where I live and we're going to stay at roughly that same distance for the rest of the journey into Hastings. So just slow down just a little too early, so just being very careful with the brakes here. And the eight-car stop sign should be coming up in a moment in the left-hand window. And so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Crowhurst, the starting speed limit is currently 60 miles per hour, with just over 3 miles to go to our next stop, which is West St. Leonard's. So I have been noticing towards this end of the route, I've actually been struggling to get a stable 60 frames a second. Um, I think that might actually partly be to do with the recording program, as I've recently made a switch from Bandicam to Fraps, as I prefer it. Um, but the problem is that F Fraps records some very huge files, and I think at points the hard drive is actually struggling to keep up with the amount of data that it's having to record. But on the whole, I think we've managed to get a pretty smooth close to 60 frames a second for most of the journey here. Now that we've reached 60 miles per hour, I've uh, idled the power to allow the train to coast as we're on a down 1 in 100 gradient. So we shouldn't actually lose um, much speed. And we shouldn't also gain it either due to the way that the rolling resistance has been programmed on this unit. So now I'm looking out for a warning for an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction, which is actually very close to the speed limit. It's only around a quarter of a mile to the limit. And so as soon as we reach the warning for the 40, and then going to apply the brakes up to around 40 on the brake gauge. So now coming up on the 40 mile per hour speed warning, around a quarter of a mile from the limit itself. So I'm applying the brakes now, just to ensure that we uh, get our speed down in time. We are still going down at 1 in 100, which of course is affecting our ability to brake. So we're now down to 40 miles per hour, and I'm now just releasing the brakes at this point. But I do need to keep an eye on our speed and might have to use some light braking to ensure that we don't break the speed limit along here. At the next signal coming up, we've then got around a quarter of a mile to go to an upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit.
So we've now got the warning for the upcoming 25 speed limit here. And I'm just going to apply the brakes lightly to bring our speed down. This should be about right, just up to 20 on the brake gauge. In fact, I might have even be braking slightly too hard and too early. I'm just going to reduce the braking again now and ensure that I do increase it as we see the 25 mile per hour speed board. We're now approaching West St. Leonard Station. You can see the 25 speed post just there. And now I'm just going to release the brakes for a moment. Coast into the platform here at West St. Leonard's and stop at the S and sign at the end of the platform here. So we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from West St. Leonard Station, the starting speed limit is 25 miles per hour, with just under one mile to go to our next stop, which is St. Leonard's Warrior Square. The line that we're now joining immediately after departure away from West St. Leonard's is the East Coastway route, which comes from Eastbourne and Brighton. And so that's the route I mentioned earlier that I live along. In fact, the next station behind us on that route is Bexhill Station, which is my local train station. I live just around five minutes walk from there. So now I've entered this tunnel here. The speed limit is going up to 30 miles per hour. I'm just going to wait a few seconds. Now I'm just going to just increase the power and we're just going to gently accelerate up to 30. And I'm going to idle the power once again and allow the train to coast. So East Coastway services are operated by Southern. And along here you get services from Ashford International and Orr through to Eastbourne, Brighton and London Victoria via Haywards Heath and Gatwick Airport. Services are operated by Class 377 units as well as Class 171s, which are basically Class 170s just with a couple of very uh, minor differences. And the train we just passed there, you may have noticed, was actually a Class 205 Thumper, which could occasionally be seen on this route in the past, operating services between Ashford International, Hastings and Eastbourne. Beyond Hastings, once you get past Orr Station, then the route is actually non-electrified, which is why they have to use Class 171s and in the past had to use thumpers for Ashford International services. You can see the end of the tunnel coming up here. Immediately at the end of the tunnel, we're entering the platforms at St. Leonard's Warrior Square Station. And then immediately after that, we enter another tunnel as we head towards Hastings. So now as we reach the end of the tunnel here, I'm just going to apply the brakes to start bringing our speed down. Here at St. Leonard's Warrior Square, I need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform, right before the tunnel entrance there. slowing down quite quick enough, just had to brake slightly harder than I normally would. I've reduced the braking in time for stopping and we should now be stopped in about the right place. Departing away from St. Leonard's Warrior Square Station, the speed limit is 30 miles per hour, with around three quarters of a mile to go to our next and final stop, which is Hastings. So 
So as we reach 30 miles per hour, I'm going to cut the power back to idle and allow the train to coast. And then immediately as we reach the end of this tunnel, the speed limit is dropping to 20 miles per hour. So I do need to ensure that I have slowed down to 20 just before the tunnel exit. Uh, just applied the brakes there to bring our speed down to 20. And now we're at 20 miles per hour. Hastings Station will be coming up in a moment. And the uh, signal there just told us that we're going into Platform 3 at Hastings. The train passing us there had the head code of 64 on the front. 64 was actually the head code of services that ran between um, Hastings and London Victoria via Eastbourne. It's giving us a little bit of power for a moment just to bring our speed back up slightly. So we're now doing around 20 miles per hour again. Here at Hastings I didn't see a clear stop marker so I'm just going to aim to stop near the end of the platform. Just going to pull up slightly further. Get some good old semaphore signals here, something I, I always like to see. And I think that this should be pretty much the right place to stop. And so here we are, arrival at Hastings. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really do hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook with the link to my Facebook page in the description of this video. I've also put in the description of this video a link to where you can download this route. Uh, as I just already mentioned, it's a freeware route, so you can get it for free from backdated TrainSim. And if you'd like to sponsor this channel, then please visit my Patreon page for more information. Once again, game with the link in the description of the video. Once again, thank you for watching.